Facebook, coming to you live from beautiful sunny San Diego. It's a freaking gorgeous day out today. It's like 80 degrees and sunny, not a cloud in the sky. Um, but I'm coming to you today to talk about earnest money deposits. So this is episode five of Get Real with Real Estate. And yeah, talking about deposits. So earnest money deposits, it's something that we get a lot of questions on, a lot of Um, Buyers in particular, especially if it's their first time, are often confused as to what is the deposit. And um, a lot of people often get it mixed up with the down payment. So I'm going to kind of clear that up for you guys. So an earnest money deposit, or deposit for short, is basically the money that a buyer um, puts on the line to essentially show the seller that they have skin in the game. So... Here in San Diego, uh, a typical deposit is usually anywhere from like 1% to 3% of the purchase price. So if, for instance, you're um, buying a $500,000 home, you know, it's pretty typical to see like a $5,000 to $15,000 deposit. Um, That's kind of the standard. It can really be whatever you want. Um, But basically what the deposit is, as I mentioned earlier, it's showing the seller that you have skin in the game. So what that does is basically by the seller accepting your offer as a buyer, they're therefore taking their home off the market. So other buyers can no longer view the property. They can't. Sub- they typically can't submit offers. Um, that seller by taking the home off the market is essentially missing out on other potential buyers. So where the deposit comes into play is basically if you're a buyer and you're, you know, you're going through, you're doing your inspections, you're doing stuff like that, and say, you know, you get to day like 20 of the transaction and you decide you don't want the property anymore and you back out, that deposit, depending on where you're at, could potentially be at risk and could be a way for the seller to recoup some of the costs that they lost in holding the property and um, missed missed opportunities as far as other buyers. Um, now, there's a few things. Your deposit isn't at risk right away. So many times a buyer can back out of a transaction and not lose anything, not lose their deposit at all. All they lose is time and you know anything they've spent on inspections. And that's the case if the buyer backs out within their contingency period. So um, here in California, there's typically a few different contingencies that are at play. Um, There's a few others that sometimes pop up, but the main ones are your inspection contingency, your loan contingency, and your appraisal contingency. So what those are is kind of um, safety nets, for lack of a better word, um, for the buyer. So In California, the the standard for an inspection contingency is 17 days. So that means you as a buyer have 17 days to bring in your uh, home inspector, any specialists you want, any contractors, kind of get estimates. And, you know, if you need to maybe go down to the city, check with zoning, basically do all of your what's called due diligence and find out everything you want to about the property to basically decide whether or not you want to move forward with Um, The appraisal contingency is a contingency that's in place for, basically if you're using financing, the property has to appraise for the value. Um, Otherwise, you as a buyer can back out or, you know, kind of renegotiate. Um, And then lastly, the loan contingency. Um, That's that's typically in uh, California 21 days, and that's your contingency where basically you have to qualify for a loan. So maybe on... You know, on day 20, if you find out for some reason that, you know, something happened and you can no longer qualify for the loan, that's that contingency kind of gives you a get-out-of-jail-free card and you can back out and get your deposit back. Now, if you've gone ahead and lifted all the different contingencies that you have, so you have to formally do that, like, in writing. Um, it doesn't just happen. But if you've gone ahead and lifted those contingencies and then you decide to back out, your deposit could be, you could be at risk of losing your deposit. And as I kind of touched on before, it's really a way for the seller to kind of protect themselves. Um, Because basically, let's say you had um, two buyers and they had the same exact offer and one of them had a 
$15,000 deposit and one of them had a $1,000 deposit with all terms being equal. Let's say that it's a 30-day escrow and on day 29, the buyer decides to back out. All contingencies have been lifted at this point, so their deposit is locked in. Now, the seller who took the offer with the $1,000 deposit, all they can recoup at that point and keep is the $1,000 deposit, which is kind of like, does that really account for the time that they lost and all the you know money and time and energy that, that was wasted? Probably not. Whereas if they went with the 15,000, the offer that had the $15,000 deposit, if the buyer backed out you know, at the last moment, like the other one, they would then be able to keep the $15,000. So, and the thing is, if um, that deposit, if you move ahead with the transaction, it just goes towards your down payment. So that's why a lot of people often get the down payment and the earnest money deposit uh, mixed up, because they are, in some sense, they go, the EMD or earnest money deposit goes towards your down payment, um, but it's a little bit different in the sense that you it is somewhat at risk depending on um, if you've lifted contingencies or not. So obviously a larger deposit indicates kind of more interest than a lower deposit. It's a little more on the line, a little more risk, and a little makes the, the seller a little more confident in the transaction, you know, if you have a larger deposit. Um, so yeah, I hope that that quick overview kind of gives you a little bit of a better idea of what an earnest money deposit is and how it's different than a down payment. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them for you. Um, but yeah, this was another episode of Get Real with Real Estate. Hope it was, hope it was helpful for you guys. Talk to you soon. Thanks.